Hey, good morning, guys. It's Captain Justin here. We're up in Pompano Beach, up at Complete Marine, and we are taking this Chris Craft behind me down to Coral Gables. Chris Craft, Dirty Chris Craft from Pompano Beach down to Coral Gables this morning. And we're look, we're trying to do it yesterday, but the weather offshore was pretty bad. It's calling for like five to six footers. So we checked the weather and today it's the wind supposed to have laid down and it looks like hopefully about threes offshore. So what we're gonna do is head down the ICW and about Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we're going to pop out in the ocean, see how calm it is, and if it's too rough, then we're going to probably head back inside, haul over, take ICW the rest of the way to, the, to Coral Gables. And there we go, that's the plan. Let's see what happens. So when jumping on a boat for the first time, um, you want to make sure it's got all the safety equipment, so we're going to kind of hunt around for, try to see where they might have life jackets. Let's see, we've got some life jackets in there, it looks like. We've got extra lines, it's good. We've got short power cable. We've got a, a, uh, we've got a horn, it's necessary. And I just popped this cabinet open, I found our battery switches. So we've got our two engine battery, or three engine batteries rather, and our house battery, so pop those on. Make sure our electronics come on. It's looking good. And uh, we're just waiting to get the keys from the service center, but kind of looks good there. All right, I'm gonna walk back here, make sure these engines have discharge. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so we're just leaving Complete Marine up in Pompano, and we are headed down to Coral Gables this morning. So we were looking at coming out yesterday, however, the winds offshore were pretty high. They were like 15 to 20 knots, calling for five to six foot seas, and we don't really want to run in that. So we waited till today, the winds have laid down quite a bit. And our plan this morning is we're gonna take the ICW down to Fort Lauderdale. We're gonna pop out in the ocean, see how, if it's if it's kind of rough, if it's good weather, if we can run offshore, we will. Uh, we'll try to run down at least to haul over. We'll make a decision, do we go all the way down to Biscayne Bay and pop in that way? Or if it's too rough, we'll probably come in, haul over and take ICW all the way down just for some smoother riding. So we'll make that decision when we get there and uh, we'll keep you posted along the way. Hope you guys enjoy the video. So we're on a 35 Chris Craft, and let's see what we've got here. We have twin Garmin systems. We have a LumaLink uh, boat control system. So we've got our RPMs there. 
We've got triple 400s, Mercury's, and uh, we're gonna bring this boat up to speed pretty soon and see what it can do. Try to make up some time getting down to Coral Gables. It's about a 40, 45 mile trip. So we're gonna try to cruise at 30 knots at least at some points. Otherwise it's gonna take us quite a while, but it should be a good day. Let's get out there and see what happens. Nice to have some courtesy on the water. These guys are doing something dangerous and try to keep each other safe out here. Yeah, that, that's the thing when you're going fast. It, this area is 25 miles per hour. You're allowed, to, you're allowed to drive, but that doesn't mean you can haul ass and you know, make it dangerous situations for everybody. So, you know, it's one of the one of the hallmarks of being let's say a professional or at least a competent captain is you know am i looking out for any sort of danger and these guys are working close to the water if i send a big wake through there it could, it could ruin their day it could injure somebody hurt their equipment you know and, and we would be responsible or partially responsible at least so you know it's but above and beyond that it's just it's really about safety and looking out for other people uh, you know you all, if, especially if you're running down the ICW in speed zones, you're, you're still looking out for oh, people in the water, paddle boarders, you know, and always, always stay vigilant. Hey guys, so we're on this 35 Chris Craft, and it has triple 400 Mercuries. And I think this boat has just the right amount of power. It, uh, in a lot of boats, let's say if this weight, or let's say if it had smaller horsepower, it might just, just be a little bit underpowered. But with triple 400s, you, you hit the throttle and you get pretty much like instant response. Uh, it, you can just feel the boat kind of shove you forward. It, it's pretty nice. You can sense the power of the engines. Uh, we did a top speed run uh, a little bit earlier and we got up to over 50 miles per hour. Um, just about, I mean, as soon as I got off plane, we were doing about 35 knots. Uh, this boat, it's got a lot of grunt, that's for sure. It's a little bit top heavy. It tends to sway a little bit. Uh, you can see it has this kind of big, heavy fiberglass T-top. Um, the beam is not super narrow or super wide, but uh, all in all, it's I'd say so far, it's been a lot of fun. We're gonna take this boat offshore later and see how it handles the seas, but so far um, I'm liking it. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Okay guys, so we're getting a forward high water alarm. Uh, it's gone off a couple times and when we get these alarms, it's important not to ignore it. It means either number one, the sensor's bad or number two, it, it's actually sensing water. So uh, what I just did 
is I popped open this hatch here and you can see down into our bilge. Uh, there's a little bit of water in there. It, when, I, when I just popped it open earlier, it was actually sucking out some water. Uh, the pump, the bilge pump was going. And what I think happened is they just sprayed this boat down. Uh, they were kind of uh, gonna give it a quick wash. And my guess is that some of that water uh, filled up some of the, the bilge compartments earlier. And during our, our higher speed run, some of it may have sloshed made its way down into the bilge where it activated the bilge pump so uh, once again you know no cause for alarm here but it's just important really important guys that if alarms go off you try to figure out what's going on or at least at least open the bilge hatches and see if, if you have any situation going on there so we're just coming into Fort Lauderdale now We've got our water taxi up ahead so far, so good. This is the it's the longer portion of the trip. Just going at idle speed. We've got a we've got a flooding current. You can kind of see the the water's pushing our bow around, especially inside these bridges. The the venturi effect causes all that flood water, all that tide water, to get squeezed in, and that actually speeds up it speeds up the path of the water. Um, that's why you get kind of such extreme water situations like especially all over in that it's all that ocean water all that tidal water is trying to force its way through that inlet causing the water to accelerate through okay guys so we just got high signal for high water alarm so we're gonna pop down pop our head down hatch kind of hear our build pump is working right now or just was had to pump a bit of water out so, not quite sure exactly where that's coming from but I don't know we're going at idle speed nothing's really sloshing around so could be uh, some of the weight that from the boat we just passed kind of surged some water down there and enough to activate the build pump. It looks like the water tank is just about full, um, but I don't really, I don't see any leaks coming out of it. It looks pretty watertight, and um, and that's gonna be nice weight to have at the front of the boat for when we go offshore. But anyway, it's, uh, again, we're just gonna keep an eye on it. sure where that's coming from. Okay, right, we're crossing Las Olas Boulevard. It's Las Olas down that way. That's the beach over that way. Through the Venice area of Lauderdale, 
We've got all these canals with some pretty large houses on them. Most of them with a the boat out front. Just coming up to Pier 66. A lot of traffic. Hey guys. So we just made it through Fort Lauderdale. We're right kind of in the cruise ship basin. Just coming around the corner here to the outlet of Fort Everglades. Take a look. So we're gonna plan to head straight out this way. See what it's like out there looking at it from here. We can see already, I don't know if you guys can see in the camera, but those little white caps looks like maybe not the most pleasant out there, but we'll take a look and uh, see if we can run offshore because I'm already getting sprayed. Right here as I'm sitting here, so I'm going to drop the uh, front windshield there um, and, and close the cabin door and try to lock this down and see what it's like. As you guys can already see, we're just starting to come out now. It's already getting a bit choppy. So we dropped the uh, we dropped the front windshield down, closed the door. So hopefully it keeps us nice and dry in this cockpit area. So the the wind is supposedly from the northeast. So we're going to be taking it a little bit off the quarter and. Uh, off the beam and off the quarter and if it's it really is three feet then it might not actually be so bad we're we're heading directly into it now so it, it seems pretty rough but if uh if it's in this off the beam you know we might roll a little bit more but we're not going to get this bow like slamming into waves effect so the and then the other thing the forecast called for was the period of five seconds that is the amount of time from a wave hitting you to the next wave hitting you. So the longer the period, the smoother ride it's gonna be. So five seconds is pretty good. We'll see what it actually is when we get out there. See if we wanna turn around or actually head south offshore. Okay, we got some jet skis up ahead. So the way you wanna drive in rough weather is it's just, you're modulating the throttle. So you don't want to really hit the, the waves directly head on. Uh, you kind of want to angle it a little bit and you don't want the waves to push you back. So you kind of like throttle your way into the wave and right before you hit the top, you throttle down. It's It will sink the boat back into the wave so you don't get that effect where you're just being launched off the wave. You know, just this cut right here looks pretty rough, but if we look over to our right past the jetty, it's actually looking pretty smooth, so I think we're gonna have a pretty nice run down to Coral Gables offshore today. This is not bad at all. Not bad. So let's see if we can give an example. So there's a wave coming, so I'm gonna throttle into it, let go. Nothing's really big enough, but this one here, I'm throttling it down, throttling through, coming up, drop the throttle. You kind of, you just have to sort of play with it. You just get it with experience, but um, what you don't want to do is slow all the way down. What you don't want to do is throttle all the way up. You just start, just start playing with the throttles, see what gives you the smoothest ride. As soon as we get around this marker here, we'll be out of the deep water channel. Just gonna give it a little more throttle, lower it down. There we go. Beach right there. Yeah, we're doing 
25 knots. See kind of breaking waves there, but. Yeah, it's nice today. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the video. Thanks for watching, and if you like it, check out the next video, part two, where we decide whether we stay offshore or we go and haul over inland. Lots of great boat footage in the next one. We go through Miami Beach, downtown Miami, and we cut through Biscayne Bay all the way and finish off the Delivery of Coral Gables. Thanks again for watching.